So we're going to select our object. I'm going to go to File, Save Object. I'm going to incorporate my texture maps. And again, this is just so that um, you, you don't have to make sure that your textures are always in the same spot. And again, for me, because I put this model online, I want all of my textures to be included in the uh, in the Bob file, the, the Views Native Object Format file. So I tick Incorporate Texture Maps, and I also tick Compress File. That's just to reduce the file size as much as possible. Uh, this preview here, you can use a custom image, which I usually do. What I'll do is, once I've um, exported this model and taken it into View 2015, created the environment, done my beauty render, I'll take that beauty render and that's where I use the custom image. I'll reopen this uh, this scene, I'll save it out again and then I'll use a custom image. But because we don't have created the uh, beauty render yet, I'm going to say use current preview. Again, uh, with the garden terrace name and the description, I, I'm, I'm going to fill those in after we've done our beauty render and we come back in here and I save it out again at the very end of everything. But for the moment, I'm going to leave the uh, description blank and just leave it as Garden Terrace. Um, just going to make sure it's being exported to the right spot. Finals. I'll put it in view scenes. I'm just going to call it Garden Terrace. Again, incorporate texture maps is on, compress file is on, use current preview. Right. Now it's going to render out a preview image of the model here in just a second. Again, this is the preview image that I'm going to be swapping out once we're finished doing our beauty render. So. Again, it's a really old version of the software, it takes a little while. I don't think I can say OK until it actually previews the image here. Yeah. It won't let me click OK until it's finished doing its preview render here. OK, now it's pre it did a quick little render in that square. You didn't see it because it happened so quickly. Now it's actually saving the file out. I know that because of the bar here at the bottom. Again, I can't do anything until it finishes saving out its file, so I'm not, I can't remember exactly how long this will take. It shouldn't take as long as saving the uh, whole file, though, hopefully. This is the last step here for us in this program, and we can close it down, and we can jump straight into the new version of the software, which is... Like I said, much nicer view, much less buggy and uh, just better overall. Yeah, I, can't, I can't do anything until it's finished saving out. And again, we've got to remember this model is quite, um, quite a detailed model. It's using a lot of textures, a lot of large 4K textures too. We can see down here in the bottom, uh, that's the number of CPUs in the machine, this one has 8. How many objects are in the scene? 22, but that includes the uh, sunlight and the ground as well as the camera. So, And then the amount of polygons, and we can see here that this model is using around 15 million polys. So. Remember though, that includes all that IV, and I know the IV alone is using about, I think it's about 2 to 3 million. So that another thing to remember if, you, if you're using that IV plugin for Mac, the IV is uh, very polygon heavy. I did put an optimize on the on the IV, but so you can imagine it was about twice that originally. It was around six million polygons for all those pieces of IV. Um, so that if you do use that IV plugin, it does create geometry that's pretty polygon heavy. Just bear that in mind. So don't let the IV grow too large, otherwise you're going to use up all your computer memory.
And like I said, I know it's boring to watch this thing save out, but this is the last step we have to do with this program. And then we can jump into the new version of the software. And again, like I say, uh, if you're just working for yourself and you're not planning on putting a model online for people to download, um, by all means, jump straight to the new version of the software. You don't have to use version 9. I only do this so that the model is more compatible with older versions of the software. And again, the same thing with the textures. If you're not worrying about, you're so worried about your computer's memory, um, you probably don't have to swap out the targets for JPEGs or whatever version you're using for your diffuse textures, whether it's PNG or TIFF or whatever. You can leave them as they were. Uh, again, though, don't convert your normal maps. Leave them as target, TIFF, PNG, DDS. Don't convert them to JPEG ever. And again, I know it looks like the program's uh, frozen, but it's not. That's just the way the software works. You'll find that with the new version as well, though. Even though the, it looks like it's um, when you do a, when you save your scene out or you uh, save one of your models out, it still looks like the software is frozen. But it, it hasn't. It's working in the background. They, they haven't. That's one of those little things that they never really fixed throughout the versions to make it look as if the software is actually doing something. Max can be just as bad. When you save a file in Max, it looks like it's frozen, but it hasn't. There's no real um, indicator on the screen as to how much of a file has been saved out. It just sits there until it's finished. You can see down here it says writing file now, though. It does give you some indication. And there is actually a bar. You can't see it. I know you won't see it on, on stream because I can barely see it here. Because the, uh, the bar that's filling up is the same colour as the actual bar. It's maybe a tiny bit lighter. Uh, so it is gradually filling that bar up as it saves it out. Nine times out of ten, though, with this software, you'll find that um, the bar will just stop halfway. It's still saving the software out, but it looks like it's, again, like it's frozen, but it hasn't. So just be aware with you when you're saving out your scenes or your objects. Even if that little bar stops filling up, it's still working in the background. So don't don't close the software down, let it fit. Like I said though, you won't see it on stream, but I can see the bars up to that here at the moment. It's slowly pulling up. It's a really light colour grey. Again, you can go into your preferences and change the colours that the viewer's using, so you can see that a bit better. I generally don't worry about it because um, I can see it here barely. And usually 9 times out of 10, like I said, the bar will stop filling up, but it's still saving anyway. Really. Again here, you, you can see this little indicator here telling you what percentage it's saved out. Nine times out of ten that will stop moving as well, but it's still saving out. That's just my point. Don't don't rely on that little info thing at the bottom there because it can just stop with the software, even though it hasn't stopped. It's just a bug in the software that it's always been there. Uh, but you can see that when, when you save out a VOB, V-O-B, View Object Binary, I think that's what it stands for, uh, which is View's native uh, format for 3D model. Um, it does save back much more quickly than saving the entire scene, even though it's still just the one object it's saving. You have to remember too, while it's doing this save, it's uh, including all of the textures for the model, so all the normal maps, uh, all of the diffuse maps, and it's also compressing that file. And that, it just does that to save um, hard drive space. So it, it, it's collecting the textures uh, as it saves the model, and it's also compressing the entire file while it's doing save. So we have to be a bit patient with it. Again, you've only generally got to do this once if you're saving out your models for use in other scenes that you want to create. You'll just save it out as a bob once you've finished setting it up, like I have. And then when you load it back up again, it loads in much more quickly. It's, it's not as slow to load as it is to save. It'll still take a little while, but not, not, not a good 5 or 10 minutes. 
And again, it depends on the complexity of the model you're saving out. And this one is like 15 million polygons. So there's a lot there for it to, uh, to save. I'm looking forward to closing this version of 9 down though, because I really don't like working in it. I only do it because it's a necessity, not because not a choice, but because of necessity. The new version of the software is much better. It still has its quirks, it can still crash the new version, but not as much as the old version. It's generally a lot more stable. And like I said, there's really nothing else on the market like it that you can use, I'm afraid. I believe they used um, this software, Eon View, in the movie Avatar. It was used a lot for that movie to do the environments for that, um, for all the scenes that you see in Avatar. It's been used in actually a lot of feature films. One of the um, Terminator movies used it. I think it was number number four, Terminator Four, Judgment Day, not Judgment Day, the one after that. I think for, for the destroyed city and stuff, they used Eon View for that been used in a lot of animated films like um, Cloudy with Chance of Meatballs, all those type of animated films, they generally use view. So you can use it for things aside from realistic renders, it can handle that uh, cartoony style render look as well. They don't feel that if you use the software you must create things that look uh, realistic, you don't have to. Just like any 3D software, you, know, you can make anything, you can make it look any way you want. Again, we've kept our angel statues and those urns as separate objects so that people can remove them and just use the garden terrace if they wanted to. Or they could save out the individual angels and use them on their own in, in a garden setting or whatever if they wanted to as well. The same with the ivy. We didn't attach those pieces together because I, I wanted it so that people could remove the ivy if they wanted to. Just to give people a lot of options with, uh, with this model. I do know, I've seen some work that people have done with some of my models in the past and um, <coughs> pardon me. I've noticed that people will take things like the statues out and use them separately or remove the ivy because they don't want ivy in their uh, render. They want to do something else with uh, growing stuff on it. So. so just for anyone that wants to sell their stuff online, make sure that you give people as many options as you can to use your model. There's nothing worse than when, when you um, you get a model from someone and there's something in it that you don't want and there's no way to, to remove it because it's all been attached as one object. Particularly if you're working with models with Eon View because there's no way to edit the, uh, the model itself. It's, once it's in there, it's in there. There's, there's no... If it's all attached together like this one is, there's no way to, to break it up without the original file. And, uh, yeah, you can't even export these models once they're in view. You can, but uh, there's a setting in view to stop it from being exported, which I generally turn on. Because I sell the model on other sites uh, for people that don't want to use it in view. But this, this one is just for people that want to use this model in view. I'll put another version online, say on the creative market, for people that want to use it in Maya or Blender or Max or, you know, outside of Eon View. A more general format. Generally I save, um, when, I, when I put the model on the creative market, it'll be saved as uh, 3D Studio Max 2013 or higher, OBJ, FBX and 3DS. So those four formats are included with my models. And that's for people that use other 3D software that want to load it up. This Bob, V-O-B, is only used in view and can only be used in view. Uh, and that's for people that, that get the model from Cornucopia 3D. So. Thought I'd explain that for anyone that was getting confused as to, to this VOB format. Yeah, the, that format is only for Eon View so, uh, program. So the model's only useful in that format in this software. 
but I do have I, I do make the model available in 2013 Max and higher OBJ, FBX and 3DS. That generally covers 90% of 3D software on the planet today. And in, again, in those 3D software programs, people have more control over bits and pieces if they want to break the model apart and use it differently. But because Eon View doesn't give you that option, um, you just have to think ahead as to how people might want to change the model up a bit. We're getting there. Nearly at 70%. And now I've got to try and... I haven't really decided what sort of environment I want to create for, um, for this model. So we're going to have to play around with you a bit when we uh, jump into 2015 and start setting up an environment for it as to what sort of look we're going to go for. Because I haven't settled exactly on a look that I... A, set, a setting that I want to put this model in yet. Um, yeah, I don't know. With a lot of my previous models, while it's doing that, let's jump out of this and look at some other stuff. Uh, what do I want to show you? I don't think it's actually in my gallery. Well, this one is a good example. Uh, with a lot of my models like this, I'll set it up in a, a very formal looking garden setting. Maybe like uh, that one there. But for this model, I'm thinking maybe more, um, I don't know, maybe something a little darker looking, a little bit more, not spooky, but uh, just, just uh, fantastical, more, yeah, more unusual, perhaps. Uh, instead of just these straight out garden type scenes that you see here. Um, Because I did do one model, where is it? Might as well look at some of the other stuff so people can get a better idea of who I am and what I've done. Um, where are we, where are we, where are we? I did a, uh, a, an Art Deco uh, a garden entrance. I'll show you that because that's one of the last models I put online. Um, I don't remember what I called it. Um, it wasn't actually Art Deco, it was more Art Nouveau. It's this one here. Generally with these sort of models, I'll put them in a very formal looking garden setting like this. Like I did for this Art Deco piece. Art Nouveau piece actually. Uh, I'm thinking though that I may not go this direction with this uh, garden terrace because it's a little bit more Baroque I think one person mentioned in my chat uh, a few weeks ago a little darker uh, so I may put it in more of a, a, a fantastical forest type setting I'm thinking I'm not sure I'll, I'll work that out when we get the model into the new version of view and we start setting up the environment I'll have a look at it then um, I'll either end up putting it in a formal setting like this or I'll do something a little bit more unusual with it. And I'm leaning towards doing something a little bit more unusual at this stage. Um, yeah, we'll see how we go. If you guys have any suggestions for me, feel free to pop into chat and tell me. As to what sort of setting you think it might look good in. Um, I'm thinking maybe a forest setting at this stage. Remember though, we still have to concentrate on the model itself like I have here. I can't really do a really wide shot, I have to be focused in on the model. Again, that's uh, one of the rules for putting it online for me on Cornucopia 3D. So, it's, the, the main focus of the image always has to be the actual model you're trying to sell. So. so, I'll either go with a very formal setting like this, or I'll go in a forested setting, and I'm leaning more towards a forested setting at this stage. Thank 
ストスタイルにある But like I said, if you, any of you guys watching have any suggestions, feel free to、um, pop into chat and voice them. I'm quite happy to, to look at any sort of suggestion for an environment for the month. Remembering, of course, that we have to always focus in on the model itself. We can't have a really wide shot. I think what I'll end up doing too is we'll do the, the focus shot on the model,、uh, rend beauty render on the model. And I'll do a close up shot where we've zoomed the camera into、uh, the angel statues perhaps a little bit closer so that people can get a better rendered view of the detail in the model. Because remember, we put quite a bit of detail into the textures when we were painting them up in Mari. So we want to show people that as well. Again, composition, as I was saying, when you create your models is really important. You want to make sure you keep balance. You want to try and、um, guide the viewer's eye through the model. <laughs> hey, Smurfberry Barbecue. Yes, it's Monday already. Weekend always goes too quickly. How are you? We're just saving out our, our model here from View Version 9 so we can take it into View Version 2015 and start creating an environment for it. And、uh, as I've been saying to these guys, it takes quite a while for the software to save out a model. It does get there in the end. We just have to be patient. 72.7%, but this is a good example of what I was、uh, saying. It looks like it's frozen.、Uh, it, it hasn't. It's still saving out in the background, but oftentimes that number just won't increase anymore until it's finished. It'll just all of a sudden get ready. <laughs> you have a chill. Why do you have a chill? You have neck pain. Well, that's not good. Is it chilly? Did you mean, is it chill or chilly? I can't exactly read that. But if, why have you got neck pain, dude? What, what's going on? What are you even doing? And I know that what neck pain is like. There's nothing worse than not having a sore neck. Oh, chilly the food. Okay. Hey, Leakness, how are you? All you guys popping in.、Um, again, <laughs> for any of you guys that have just joined us, what we're doing here is we've finished setting up our normal maps and our texture maps in、uh, Eon View version 9. We've scaled our model, we've got it all ready. We're doing an export of the object now so that we can take it into View 2015. Bad posture for 15 years, n o f b e r r y Barbecue. Well, that's not good. <laughs> I've noticed sometimes I can sleep funny and I'll wake up with a sore neck. And, like I said, it's really uncomfortable and painful and annoying. And, so I know what it's like. That's usually because I've、uh, slept really weird on the pillow. And it can take days for it to come good again, you know. Overnight you can ruin it and then it takes two or three days to heal itself.、But、I do know what it's like and I'm sorry you have neck pain. Eating chili for food. You like hot food? I don't mean hot food. I like Indian food. A lot of curry and chili and that sort of thing. So we're just going to have to wait for this software here to finish saving out our file. There's no way we can speed it up. Like I said, it looks like it's crashed. It hasn't.、It's、still saving. Even though up here in the corner, Because Max does this as well, you see it says not responding. You, usually you'll see that and freak out because I, I do that in Max, it says the same thing. And there we go, it saved out our file. But a good example, don't pay any attention to this not responding up here in the corner thinking the software has crashed. It hasn't. It's just. Because 3D Studio Max does the same thing, it says the same thing.、Uh, Smokeberry Barbecue says、uh, he likes mildly spicy. Curry is your enemy. <laughs> Oh no, give it to me hot. I like hot food. Hotter the better. Munch down on a chili, a raw chili. I've always liked really spicy food. So, we have our model saved out. So, we've assigned all of our normal maps.、Uh, we've fixed our textures, we've fixed our、uh, axes, we've scaled the model properly. Again, like I said to you guys, if you're working in Eon View, make sure your model is scaled correctly. It's really, really important in this software. 
If it's not scaled correctly, when you start doing your renders, it's going to look weird. Uh, again, with the normal maps, make sure that the gamma is always set to 1 on those, or they're going to look weird. And with any plants you import, make sure you pull the backlighting up. Otherwise, you guessed it, it's going to look weird when you do a render. It's going to be too dark to shadow. So, always important to remember those three things in view. The scale, the normal map scanner at one, and uh, the backlighting on any plants that you import. And what are you showing me, Leadness? Here's what you have to show. Okay, let's have a look. Remember guys, if you've got any work you want me to look at or you want to show, feel free to pop into chat. Um, like I said, do remember to uh, tell me before you, if you're not a regular, before you pop into chat, otherwise uh, Nightbot will time you out. Uh, but I'm always happy to look at any work you guys have done. That's why I'm on Twitch. I'm here to, to see what you guys are working on, to encourage you guys to do 3D because I love it so much and I'm sure you guys would love it too if you haven't tried it. Just give it a go. You don't have to be great. That's really nice, Lightning. Right? Really nice detail through here. I was actually watching uh, you stream again, guys. Lightness is another streamer, just like Galen. I encourage you guys to check him out when he's doing his streams. There's a lot of character work like this. Um, really nice detail, Lightness, through here. Really nice. I was watching you when you were working on um, this padded section on her back earlier this morning. Lightness does a lot of his work, as you can see here in Zebra. But that, that looks really nice too, really nice. You're always good at putting detail into your model. Really nice. Um, I look forward to seeing it textured up. Again, it's another model that looks great textured up. Please texture it up, Leapness, please. <laughs> the modeling work is, 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 is great. It's better than great. It's, just, it's outstanding. It's wonderful. But texture your model up. I want to see it textured. It'll look so good, Texture. It was a little tedious. I, I, like I said, I was watching you as you were uh, as, as you were putting the detail in on that padding. And like anything with 3D, it can always be a bit tedious when you've got to repeat things so much. Um, so I, I, I can understand that. But it looks great. It looks really good. Really nice. Very nice work. You always do really wonderful detailing work in your modeling. Um, never a problem with that. Even uh, this scalloping hap uh, here on the uh, armor and stuff is very nice as well. The armor pieces are really nicely done. It's, it's, it's very nicely. It's really nice. But please, please texture it up. I want to see it textured. Because it'll just look wonderful textured. So we have... Uh, exported our model we can jump straight into view 2015 to start creating an environment for it um uh, Leighton says he'll do something like that with a bunch of alphas next time okay yeah yeah well that's that's probably a good way to speed that workflow up yeah. doing it the way you did it though by hand gives it a bit more of a um, unique look if you know what i mean it's not it doesn't look like you've used a stencil not everything will be exactly the same. That, 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 that's always a benefit. It gives it more of a realistic. Because you know me, guys, I'm always big on telling you, make sure everything isn't perfect all the time. Because nothing is perfect. And in 3D, you can make things perfect. And they just don't look real. Don't make them too perfect. But to save time. A lot of, you know, a lot of times when you're doing studio work, sometimes you don't have the option because the client wants it immediately and the sooner the better and using things any shortcuts like that can, can speed up your workflow if you're time poor um, but my, my advice is always to make things a little bit more unique and not so perfect uh, it'll really add to the realism of the model in the end so if you can try and avoid using arrays and just stencils and that type of thing and so doing it by hand is a good way to, to get that unique look. Yeah, no, you try to you, it, you did stay consistent, and I'm not saying by doing it by hand is not consistent. And it, I'm not saying don't be consistent. I'm just saying because you did it all by hand, not every piece looks exactly the same. All those little creases are all individual. They all look unique because you you did do it uniquely. You did it by hand, and that's a good way to, to get a really great looking model because. It, because nothing is perfect. Uh, 
clothing, uh, things that come off a production line sometimes, uh, but even creases, they're not all going to be the same and perfect, so I, I think it was a good way to do it by hand. I, thought, um, I can understand why you'd want to do a stencil and, and speed up the workflow, but by doing it by hand makes it look much more unique, much more real. And anybody doing hard surface stuff like this terrace, always make sure that things aren't too perfect. Because like I said, in 3D software you can make things absolutely perfect. Because it's a computer doing it, you're doing it on, you know, on a machine. You can use arrays to get things spaced exactly the same. But nothing is like that in real life that people have built by hand. It's not perfect, it's not made by a machine. People have gotten out with, the, with their physical hands to lay those, you know, to lay the stairs and to put these uh, columns in, 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 in around the banisters and stuff, or made the uh, the wrought iron for the for the fence, and it's it's not perfect. I mean, you can see here that some of these aren't actually completely straight even, and I've done that on purpose because I want to make it look like I want to make it look as real as I can. I don't want it to be perfect. Uh, Leighton says he still needs to break the symmetry. Oh no, I'm sure you wouldn't do it because it's Alfred Leighton. I'm not, not accusing you of that. Yeah, yeah, no, well that's another good way to do it. So he says he'd drop a lot of, uh, a few alphas and then sculpt on top of it. That's a good way to, to get your base down and then to make it a bit more unique uh, on, on top of that base. That's the same thing I did with these uh, dispensing. They were all unique. I just copied and pasted a whole, I, I made a unique looking piece of geometry. I created my semicircle and then I went through and I moved pieces here and there by hand. So that they weren't completely straight. Uh, not everything looked identical. And so using an alpha and Leetness as an example to, to get the base down and then going over it by hand to sculpt is another good way to, uh, to bury it up and make it look more unique. Um, so yeah, I'm not, I'm not saying don't, don't use an array, say, to, to lay out your uh, columns here. All I'm saying is after the array is finished, go through and just tweak a few here and there. You don't have to tweak every one. Just, uh, just here and there, a few tweaks, a few hand, in Leetness's case, some hand um, sculpting will really help to sell the realism of the model. Because it is something that a lot of people do tend to forget. They think that um, getting everything looking perfect in 3D is, is, is the goal, and it's not. It's not if you want to sell it as a real object. Those little little tweaks you make to it to look to make it imperfect is really what's going to sell the realism of the model. And it's really important. So um, uh, again, uh, that's why I'm also really big on making sure you soften up the edges of the hard object, like these columns and things, because nothing is ever a complete perfect 90 degree angle. Particularly with stonework, it's always smooth. But that's it's like that in anything, any hard surface really. It's never completely 90 degrees. Always make sure you smooth up those edges. For real. I know a lot of you guys use uh, what create models for games, and in games it's more difficult because you have polygon restrictions. It's better now. It used to be a lot worse when I was working in the games industry years ago. I create game models though for a studio here, and they're less concerned with um, polygon counts than they ever used to be. So even there, try to soften up those edges as much as you can. Don't get enough. But, uh, particularly if you just if you creating models that you're going to be rendering and I'm going to go into a game and go no, throw the polygons on there, you know, why not? It'll make the model look better. You don't have polygon restrictions or texture restrictions when you're doing renders, so, so go no. <laughs> throw the polygons on, smooth those edges up. Um, we may leave it there for today though guys, we've got everything we wanted to do in view version 9 finished. Uh, Smokery Barbecue says these days there are also lovely sheets like Parallax and Displacement. Yep, well that's exactly right. And uh, you guys that were watching me while I was creating my normal maps for this model, in, I used Gnarled, K-N-A-L-D. Well remember I saved out a height map which we can use for parallax mapping in the Unreal Engine. As well as an occlusion map which we can uh, use as an overlay on our diffuse texture in the Unreal Engine just to give the textures a bit more uh, ink to lift them up a bit. And they're the type of tricks that uh, people use when they're doing game modeling to give the model the appearance of more detail than it actually has. Yeah, I know you guys, I know Snowberry and Legions, you guys just tuned in, um, but yeah, 
I stream from 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, guys, as you know. Um, I will be back on again though tomorrow at uh, 5 p.m. Pacific time in the U.S., which is 12 p.m. in Australia, 1 a.m. in the U.K. Um, it, come March, though, that's when daylight savings in the United States finishes, which means for you guys in the U.S. watching me, I'm always on at 5 p.m. Pacific time for you but it will push my start times back an hour for, uh, in Australia and in the UK or in Europe. So where I start now at 12 p.m. in Australia and 1 a.m. in the UK, it'll push that back to 11, p. 11 a.m. in Australia and uh, midnight in the UK. So I'll remind you guys when that happens, it starts from March 12 though. So at the moment, I'm still on the same schedule. But um, I will be back on again tomorrow at 5 p.m. Pacific time in the US. 12 p.m. in Australia, 1 a.m. in the UK, and whatever time you are in between those around the world. Um, we're finished working in View version 9, so tomorrow we can jump straight into 2015 and uh, start, we'll import the model here and start working on an environment for it. Like I said, I'm, I'm not really sure what environment we're going to create for it yet. We'll work it out as we go. Um, I want to thank you guys for watching and hanging out with me. Uh, thank you. I will be on again tomorrow at 5 p.m. Pacific time in the U.S. If you're not sure, keep an eye on my Twitter page at does 3 d I always post 15 minutes before I'm about to go live to my Twitter page. But my schedule doesn't change. I'm always on at 5 p.m. Pacific time in the U.S. On a Monday, a Tuesday and a Wednesday. So uh, I, will be there. I will be back on again tomorrow, guys, and then we can start working on... Uh, working in view 2015 with uh, this model we've finished with it in view 9 now like i said uh, thank you guys for watching and uh, hopefully i'll see you guys tomorrow see you guys <laughs>